the Apollo 11 moon landing and Neil Armstrong's giant leap for mankind will always be part of the memory in a culture dominated by high technology, including wearable computers, the Internet of Things, and rockets that enable outer space orbits and lunar landings. This historic event on July 20th, 1969, marked the conclusion of a difficult flight to the moon's surface. But the NASA astronauts still faced numerous dangers while performing surface operations, as Command Module Pilot Michael Collins watched from a distance, high above the lunar surface. Even when everything arrived in shape, the competent touchdown was far from secure. Let's take a look at what really happened on the Apollo 11 moon landing mission that up until now has been surrounded with controversies. This is Space Infinity. Activate the journey through space and time by tapping that like button. Make sure you've subscribed, ring the notification bell, and leave reports by sharing this video. Missing the mark on touchdown amid multiple alarms. Armstrong and Aldrin were unaware that their moon landing plans had already been altered by an unnoticed Newtonian physics effect until they reached lunar orbit and later separated from the command module to start their landing process. Insufficient venting of residual pressure inside the tunnel that joined the two spacecraft before undocking resulted in the spidery lunar module Eagle receiving an additional lift as it parted from the command module Columbia a few hours earlier. Armstrong noticed they were going to overshoot their landing spot at about nine minutes before touchdown, predicting they would miss by around three miles, which was a close educated guess they actually missed by four. The intended landing spot was selected because it was relatively smooth, unlike the moon, which is covered in pebbles and craters. The two had to find a different, safe landing spot with the altered flying plan. The Eagle's computer had been diverting them with program alarms throughout their descent, as if that weren't drama enough. Additionally sporadic were radio connections with mission control. The onboard landing computer, which was alerting of an overload, was what sent off the repeating alarm. Fortunately, mission control approved the landing because they thought there was a low risk of computer overload due to the alarm's intermittent nature. Another issue emerged as the minutes passed and the two watched the lunar surface inch closer by the second. They were burning more fuel than anticipated. They were almost out of fuel due to their overshot landing, which increased the urgency of finding a landing location. According to flight controller Steve Bales, the dead man's curve is something you never want to go under. In essence, you're a dead man since you just don't have enough time at that height to do an abort before you crash. Armstrong piloted the Eagle gently down onto the makeshift landing location that would soon become Tranquility Base, the first temporary human presence on the moon, with only 30 seconds of gasoline left in the tank. Another issue was developing as the astronauts completed their post-landing activities and the adrenaline began to fade. Despite being turned off, sensors were still detecting a pressure buildup in the fuel line of the landing engine. This could only mean that ice had built up in the line, blocking it, and that the hot engine was heating the backed up fuel vapor. The corporation that managed the building of the lunar module, Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation, and NASA held discussions about this rise in pressure, which they determined to be a danger that, if not addressed, may result in a disastrous explosion. They therefore devised a scheme to vent the system. According to aeronautical engineer and father of the lunar module, Thomas J. Kelly, we all thought that the ramifications of an explosion, even of the very little quantity of fuel remaining in that short stretch of line, was unforeseeable and undesirable. However, the ice blockage thawed, the gas was freed, and the issue was resolved on its own before the orders could be communicated to Armstrong and Aldrin. Before Apollo 11, scientists couldn't be confident Armstrong and Aldrin would land on stable ground, despite the fact that the area beneath Tranquility Base appeared to be free of any pebbles that may have hurt the lunar module as it touched down. Imagine if the substance behaved like quicksand. Additionally, it was possible that the fluffy clumps of moon dust contained sharp rock fragments that could harm the lander or moonwalkers alike. Armstrong's one small step crunched into the gray powder before NASA was certain the lunar surface was safe for extravehicular activities. Even though earlier robotic missions, like the Surveyor Landers, were supposed to research the lunar surface as a preliminary to preparing later Apollo missions, EVA. Although this may seem insignificant in the grand scheme of the Apollo program, lunar dust is no laughing matter. The moon was formed over billions of years by meteorite strikes but it lacks the processes that would smooth out these tiny particles. The abrasive dust was more than just an inconvenience for the Apollo astronauts. 
Longer EVAs were part of missions that followed Apollo 11, and there are tales of these tiny rock fragments getting inside lunar modules, coating helmet visors, jamming zippers, and even getting within layers of protected spacesuit material. According to Brian O'Brien, a Rice University professor from 1963 to 1968, who developed radiation and dust experiments for the Apollo missions, all of the astronauts complained of the problems with dust. Just getting close to the moon creates dust. Additionally, dust is stirred up by an astronaut's walking or a rover's motion. Due to the lack of an environment, the dust will move ballistically and adhere to everything. Facebook posts that became viral in late 2020 and early 2021 assert that Edwin E., the second man to walk on the moon, Buzz Aldrin Jr., claimed that he saw aliens while he was there and that he told NASA and later took a lie detector test, which he passed. While this claim is partially true, the astronaut did describe seeing an unidentified object moving outside of the Apollo 11 spacecraft, but the sighting was explained shortly after the mission returned. Aldrin was interviewed in Ask Me Anything session on Reddit in 2014, where a user asked, do you believe in aliens, and what are the sightings you observed aboard Apollo 11? Followed by a statement that, a light out the window seemed to be traveling alongside us. Other than being a spacecraft from another planet or country, Aldrin wrote, There were many explanations for what that could be. It was either the rocket we had separated from, or the four panels that moved away when we extracted the lander from the rocket and we were nose to nose with the two spacecraft. The sun reflected off of one of these panels, Aldrin continued. When the mission returned to Earth, we debriefed and explained exactly what we had observed. Aldrin then claimed that because he was unaware that the public was unaware of this information, he made his observations in a television interview many years later. Even though what he saw was not an alien, Aldrin claimed on Reddit that the UFO people in the United States were really very unhappy with him for allegedly concealing the information. USA Today and The Washington Post fact-checked claims that Aldrin spotted a UFO during the first moon landing after they went viral. Thirty years later, a speech outlining the White House's course of action in the case of mission failure that had been written for then-President Richard Nixon was made public. The president was prepared to address the nation when it became clear the mission was lost since there were a number of things that could have gone wrong during that groundbreaking operation. For every person who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some area of another world that is forever mankind. The passage closes on a moving note. The in event of moon disaster speech was never actually delivered. Instead, it was kept in a file to serve as a constant reminder of how risky space exploration is, as many heroic explorers have lost their lives since the dawn of the space age. The crew members of Apollo 11 made history by being the first people to land on an alien planet and remain alive. The strength of the rocket, the cleverness of the spacecraft, and Neil Armstrong's historic first steps on the lunar surface are frequently brought up in discussions of the Apollo 11 mission. However, the tale of how this momentous occasion was reported to the world is as amazing. We wouldn't have the images that inspired innumerable scientists, engineers, and artists. In addition to leaving a lasting impression on so many spectators, had it not been for the technology that made it possible. What are your thoughts on the Apollo 11 moon landing mission? Let us know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, share this video, and head to the archive for more from Space Infinity.